Welcome to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. I'm Richard Dugan, your host. Thank you so much for being with us here on the program. We come your way Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., Wednesdays at 9 a.m., and we stream live at those times at richarddugan.com. Podcasts are on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and many other locations. And you can watch these conversations on YouTube, the uh, channel Richard Dugan, Tell Me Your Story, in both cases, SoundCloud or YouTube. We also ask it if you can support the work that we are doing financially. We have a PayPal account. It's there for your security as well as ours. The email address you'll want to use when sending, richard at richarddugan.com. That's richard at richarddugan.com. And we ask that you spend time, and we're going to spend some time talking about this as well, going within and listening to that still, small voice in that quiet, peaceful place during this, the decade of perfect vision. With all of that being said, and it's a mouthful, let me tell you, we have a very special guest on our program. Uh, she uh, she works, if you will, her vocation, if you will, energy, alchemy, healing, manifesting, life by design, and many other areas. Uh, after working, uh, um, after, actually, I should say that uh, you can find out how to raise your vibration and hold the frequency of infinite abundance, wealth, and prosperity, and finally create your fulfilled life, which is what we're all about when we talk about choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true, you can also shift from your current money wealth uh, set, uh, set point into uh, new levels of energetic wealth and access the five states of consciousness to, um, to break free from fear and lack with our special guest here on the program today. Maria Martinez, I want to thank you so much for being with us on the program. I have looked forward to this uh, for the last few weeks. We've had a little bit of a challenge scheduling, but we finally made it. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. I'm excited to be here today. Thank you, Richard. I uh, want to jump right in with the website. I want people to uh, find out more about the work that you are doing. And uh, the website is three, uh, 360prosperity.com. That's 360prosperity.com. And we certainly hope that uh, you will... Um, you will avail yourselves of that website. We've got a bunch of other locations you can go to as well. Uh, but um, uh, Maria invites, uh, welcomes you actually to healing, to the healing journey, your healing journey, um, bringing about happiness, abundance, prosperity, wealth, energy, love, health, and vitality. I guess that covers everything, doesn't it? <laughs> That's what we are all about, right? That's how we create our life by design, by you know, elevating our vibration all around and creating the life that we want by being happy, healthy in our body, uh, having the resources, financial resources, the freedom and love in our life that allows us to feel happy and fulfilled. Now, you are in a, a very special lineage, if I am understanding correctly, a lineage of shamans. Uh, from a very young age, you started to uh, you started to be um, uh, I guess it was be you started mentoring with uh, the archangels. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that because that's that's rather extraordinary. My mother has often asked me, "Have you ever had any supernatural experiences?" And I said, "Well, if I have, I didn't know that's what they were because it seemed normal to me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's actually how it felt to me too, very young. Um, I mean, I have early memories around five, four or five years old, uh, just you know, being surrounded by angels, uh, especially Archangel Michael, uh, Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel. Um, and sometimes they were just with me, like you can feel their presence, see their presence, feel their love, feel their, you know, their unique qualities. And it was sort of very natural for them to be there. And there were other times where they came in because it was specific work that we were doing. And it, was, it wasn't it was just the angels. It was other other guides and ascended masters. I also have experiences with Jesus, Mother mm -hmm. Mary. Um, we talked about Mary Magdalene. Um, I've also had other experiences with other beings um, like Pleiadians and Ecturians that came in for a specific purpose. Um, 
very early on, again, it felt very natural to me to be in that space. And it felt safe. Um, and I wasn't able to tell the difference at the beginning until you know, I had started having conversations with my mom about what I was seeing, who I was with. And then she shared about our lineage, uh, my grandfather, my grandmother. And in that early, in those early years of my life, the work started again when they, they used to come in and it was, you know, it was first of all, it was connection. You know, it, that was the first thing that I experienced connection with them. Then it was sharing information, knowledge, and then it was teachings, like teachings, teaching me to help other beings, especially free other spirits uh, from other dimensions. Uh, so that sort of became my early on work that I did as a child. Nowadays, you would call that exorcism. Um, so that's mm. the work that I was doing, freeing uh, spirits from lower dimensions, being trapped in other dimensions, uh, being attracted or held or um, detained by demon-like energies. Um, and part of that journey was helping them to awaken to their infinite potential and power. And in that awakening, the spirit itself would remember and and. You know, because it, you know, our the way we we change or the way we create is also through our knowing and our imagination. If you imagine yourself powerful, then you are. So when you awaken the spirit, and the spirit remembers, "I am infinite. There are no boundaries, no barriers. I am pure light. I am pure divine power." Then there is nothing that can de can detain it. And so that was very powerful, uh, helping them awaken and set themselves free was a very rewarding though i mean now when i look at it it, it sounds amazing but back then i didn't know you know how significant that was it was just what i was doing this is what i was being guided to do and you have felt that from a very early age to the present where you have actually added uh quite a number of uh, what i like to call modalities to the work that you do, but in particular, uh, you say that you channel divine source intelligence to facilitate powerful healing and transformation. Tell us a little bit about this divine intelligence, divine source intelligence. Um, what, what does divine source intelligence help or facilitate you and your, who do I say, clients? Mm -hmm. And what does divine source intelligence not help you facilitate with your clients? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, I want to say that, and many of us are, and some of us know, know this, that I'm a vessel, right? We are all a vessel of the divine. The divine is the pure source of light and energy. Uh, some of us are aware that we have that connection. I was, I, always been aware that I have that connection because I had the connection with my angels. And through that time, I developed, you know, that I cultivated that relationship with the divine. And so that ultimate consciousness is what many people call God, source, or universe. Uh, for me, it's just this unconditional love that it's, you know, it, it's miraculous. It's miracle frequency. It's divine power, divine grace, it's, it's all the higher frequencies that are available for us to embody. And when I'm working with a client, I help that client move into the space of that connection with divine light intelligence, divine source. And that intelligence is not necessarily outside us. It's actually within us. But we've created that separation from source, from God, from universe. So when we create that separation, we feel like you know, we feel like there's challenges that we can't overcome. We feel that that um, we can't access certain things within us, like abundance and good health and um, love. But when you realize that that connection is already there, it's an awakening, an awakening that happens within the cellular level and, and then within the DNA level. And in that awakening, you can transform. In that awakening, it's like um, it's like realizing your perfect life. And realizing that you're a perfect image of yourself, 
and then choosing that. And then, and when you choose that, you're actually removing the old patterns and the old cycles of the current life. And then you open the door to that new possibility. And that in that space of awareness, uh, in that zero point energy, that uh, Christ consciousness, everything is possible. And when we facilitate that or when they facilitate that for my clients, they feel this an enormous potentiality. Uh, they feel like everything is possible for them. They feel a shift energetically. So they feel energy moving through their body. They feel a mind shift as well because we're releasing old programs and they, they feel empowered. And that's really what we want, right? We want everybody to feel empowered so that they can create their own choices, that they can create their own reality. When we move into that space of empowerment, they have their own key to their divine life, to carving, designing their own life. And I say that I'm, uh, I am the catalyst because that is what I am. I am the vessel of the divine so that they can make that connection, that they can have that, that, um, reconnection. Um, so it's like creating a bridge, right? And when they come together, then they can access the power that's already available to them to transform and allow and receive. And that happens at the multidimensional level, you know, in that we're, you know, this is just sort of summarizing, but in the session, we're working with the different dimensional bodies. We're working with the mental programming. We're working with the energetic, um, energetic frequencies that are there. Um, the attachments, we're working with the emotional baggage that is there. We're working with the spirit that wants, you know, that wants to reconnect with the body and wants to be embodied in the individual. We're awakening the vitality of the soul. So this is happening at the multidimensional levels. When they work with an individual, they go into that place. Uh, it, it almost feels like a healing chamber. It feels like a work about that they step into where all of this is possible for them. And then once they can access it, then they can access it again. So they create that shift in that moment and they can go back and continue to create those shifts within themselves to, again, continue to cultivate that relationship of their I and presence. Everything within me and everything outside me is one, uh, as well as access the divinity within them, access that divine intelligence within us. The divine intelligence is having it all. The divine intelligence is divine health or perfect health. Divine intelligence is it's infinite possibility and pure potentiality that we all have available to us within us. So when you can access that and we, you can live in that space of I am all of that, all of that in all that I can be, then you continue to release those layers and continue to upgrade your frequency and vibration to creating more of what you desire or your new reality. Hmm. We're talking with uh, Maria Martinez, and uh, she's here to help you along your healing journey to happiness, abundance, prosperity, wealth, uh, energy, love, health, and vitality. It seems to me, uh, Maria, that one of the, the, I don't know if it is the greatest obstacle, but it certainly is one of them, um, is getting distracted. Um I was watching this video, uh, this movie, this documentary about cats, and that if that a cat can be trained. However, the uh, training period may only last between 30 seconds and, if you're lucky, three minutes before the cat decides, I'm going to go do something else. I want to go over there and see what's over there. Well, our brains sometimes are kind of the same way. Um, I've often found it humorous that at car dealerships, you know, they use those inflated, um, uh, waggly creatures that they have out there that move around because they have air blowing up in them and they're moving around. It's like, does that really work to get people into the car dealership? That does, you know, and if they didn't do it, it, if, if it didn't work, they wouldn't do it. So there are lots of distractions that keep us from pursuing our happiness and abundance and prosperity, et cetera, et cetera. Do you, do you feel that that is uh, maybe somewhere at the top of the list? I know there's probably something else that it's right at the top of the list. Yeah. Um, distraction is definitely what I'm so distraction, avoidance, procrastination, self-sabotage are all, I think they're all kind of, you know, for some people, one may fall at, 
at the top, but I think all four of them are kind of along the same lines that will get in the way or we allow them to get in the way of us creating. But a lot of times that distraction is because we haven't chosen, like we haven't chosen what we really want or we don't feel we're worthy of it or we haven't decided that we are value, valuable and that we deserve it. So we allow the distractions and sometimes we allow the distractions until we decide or until we feel worthy or until we feel we have permission to have. So all of these distractions can be removed and released from our field, distractions, avoidance, procrastination, self-sabotage. It A lot of it has to do with self-love. When we love ourselves so much, we don't really allow distractions. We don't allow procrastination. We don't allow self-sabotage. Uh, we don't allow ourselves to be derailed from our path and from our purpose. We just keep going. We stay on course. So these distractions often come and affect the emotional body and the mental body. They're old programs that are there, um, influences from society, influences from our parents that are there. But once we make the decision that we deserve and we are clear about what we want and what we want to create, then we are more uh, more aligned with, with our vision. But we're also more in... Uh, I would say more intense in in our actions mm -hmm. and our movement forward um, and intentional in what we're creating. So we're not allowing so many distractions. Yes, every once in a while, maybe we'll allow um, a longer break than we would allow ourselves or you know, we'll change and have flexibility, but that's part of balance. That's part of having balance in our daily life. We do want to have that flexibility to take a mental break uh, to spend time with family or, you know, to coexist with others. So as we create our reality, we want to be aware of the things that in the past took us away from our alignment and what was the actual uh, truth behind that. A lot of times that was fear, fear of failure, fear of um, success, fear of not being accepted, fear of rejection, uh, fear of not having the resources or fear of judgment. So, so many different things connected to fear, so many uh, faces of fear that actually created that distraction, that avoidance, the procrastination, the self-sabotage. But once we, we address that root and then we align with what we truly want, then moving forward and creating becomes a lot easier. Mm. Yeah, I was going to go with fear, the next that next step. But the thing is, is that one works its way into the next works its way into the next it's like you you do you don't compartmentalize everything is is connected in some way shape or form maria martinez is my guest and we're here talking about the work that she is doing uh you can go to 360prosperity.com that's 360 and the word prosperity.com find out more about the work that she is doing her phone number is even there ladies and gentlemen which is uh, which is very interesting uh that uh, obviously you have a machine that, that, or, or a voicemail that answers and so forth, but I find it, um, very interesting, um, in terms of my own life, which is the only thing I can really speak to. And I've even asked myself this question on numerous occasions over the last 44 plus years that I have been in this business. Why is it as I continue to move forward? And gathering more and more tools to do more and more different things that I really do enjoy. That I am not doing better from, let's just say, a wealth or abundance. Uh, I would say more wealth because I, I recognize that abundance does not always come in the form that we think it should. Um I'm sure there are a lot of other people that that feel the same way. I have been working my tail off for decades and I don't seem to have acquired or gathered the fruits that I should have by now of my labors. And maybe mm -hmm. they've been working a lot longer than I have. That's a really good question. And I actually do get that question often. Uh, and a lot of times that has to do with your relationship with money and how you value money. So if you, if your vision of your life is actually wealth, um, wealth in, in your bank account, so lots of money in your bank account, material possession, then that's where your energy and vibration is going to go to and you're going to connect with that. 
we all have a different vision or idea of success, abundance, prosperity, and wealth. For some people, it's freedom, right? Traveling, having the money to travel, not necessarily material possession, um, but it's being able to get up and go and travel or having the freedom to take time away from work or whatever they're doing and spending time with their family. And some people is actually accumulating wealth, like investment portfolios, real estate portfolios. So it just depends. You know, when people ask me that question, the first thing that I see is, is one, they haven't connected to that either. They haven't connected what they truly desire and want, or they don't believe that it's possible for them. And a lot of times they don't believe that it's possible for them because they look at their past. I have worked so hard. I've invested in this. I've learned so much and I'm still not here. But that's, that's, that's actually an old programming. And a lot of times yeah, there's the ego that gets in the way and says, it, you know, subconsciously it says, well, where is it? Yeah. It's not here yet. Oh, you're never going to get there. And we talked about fear earlier. So what happens is that fear kicks in and their ego kicks in as well. And they start working together to preserve the individual from pain and suffering. So instead of being all in, in what they want to do, they censor, they kind of, yeah, they're in and certain things and not all things. So there's, they're kind of protecting themselves from being all in. And a lot of times that has to do with the alignment and being at peace with oneself. So if you haven't forgiven yourself, if you haven't completely accepted yourself for who you are, uh, and if you are not in acceptance of where you are in this moment of in time, then you're working against yourself. So the process that I work with individuals is it's to start where you are now. So in this moment in time, accepting yourself, where you are, looking at your finances, being, okay, that's what it is right now. Whatever your debt, whatever your credit, whatever you have accumulated, whatever you don't have. And then looking at where is the lack playing in, in this? So we look at the lack, we look at the scarcity, and we look at the fears connected to that. We look at the decisions that they made about money. Oh, well, it's never going to get here, or this is as good as it's going to get. Whatever they accepted about their money. And then I look at their frequency. And I look at money itself, like energy, the energy of money, the energy of wealth, energy and abundance around. And we work to clear whatever is the barrier to having. And then we allow that to come into the field so that they're more open to receiving and their capacity to have also expands. So we move them into sort of a waterfall of abundance and prosperity and wealth so that it's constantly flowing into their life. And then we work on their receiving channel so they can receive, but also their ability to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times if you have old programming about poverty consciousness or lack in scarcity or fears about managing your money uh, or unworthiness connected to your money, then it's going to come in and it's going to go back out. So we work on fine tuning those uh, the capacity to hold, the capacity to build, and we reconnect them to wealth, abundance, and prosperity. It, so it's sort of like recalibrating those energies and frequencies around them mm. so that they can hold the vibration of having receiving and be able to build the wealth that they want to build. We're talking with Maria Martinez, and we're talking uh, about the work that she does through her website, 360prosperity.com, which we will be linked to, ladies and gentlemen. We certainly hope that you'll avail yourselves of that link and her website and the work that she does uh, at, at, at one level or another. I want to ask you about um, your perspective on something that's been around for, well, it's been around forever, I guess but we've only really been focused on it for maybe the last couple of decades. The law of attraction as spelled out, for example, not exclusively, but in one place in the book and movie, the secret is that an appropriate perspective or as one of my guests said, they left something out. They didn't do it on purpose, but they left something out. And that was the individual's, life's purpose and whether those things they wanted to attract to themselves were really in their best interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say that, that the individual that share that, um, I would agree with what they said in addition to not just their life's purpose, but um, also what we brought in from other lifetimes. Right. 
So we have what we're here to work on. So we have our life purpose, but also we hear our, our soul's evolution that we came here to work through. And part of that could be uh, abundance and prosperity, lack and scarcity from other lifetimes or poverty consciousness from other lifetimes or ancestral stuff that we're here to work through. So the law of attraction uh, is like a resonance, right? You you attract, you move into a vibration and then you attract that vibration. So that's one part of it. The other part of it um, is what um, having clarity in what you want um, what brings you joy, living in your purpose, your soul's purpose. And your purpose can look many different ways, but we all have a purpose. And for some of us, it's just to be happy. Some of us is to heal our lineage. Some of us is to create wealth and prosperity. For some of us is to bring something new into the world, whatever that is. So what, whatever you're creating, or you want to attract that in alignment with your soul's mission, soul's purpose, as well as how you express your purpose in the world. Um, the other thing about the law of attraction is that it's beyond, you know, when we talk about energy, when we talk about vibration, when we talk about uh, the DNA, that goes beyond the law of attraction. So it's decoding what's there, decoding what's in the DNA. So these are the old prog programmings, these are the ancestral stuff that you bring in from other lifetimes. What's in the spiritual DNA, which is what you're bringing from other lifetimes and timelines that we can look at. So there's a little bit more that we get to look at to be able to create. Uh, I'm not saying that it doesn't work because it does. Actually, it does work, uh, but it doesn't work for everyone. I get this question a, a lot again um, about manifesting and instant manifestation. Mm -hmm. As well as, you know, why can I get there already in my evolution? Because we're all here. We have our individual plan. Yeah. And if it was if it was that easy, we would all be there already. Right. Or if we didn't have other things to do, then we would all be all be there already. So we all have our individual plan. And for some of us, again, uh, is to hear our lineage. For some of us to bring something, some new technology into the world. For, for some of us, it's just to experience joy and happiness because we've done a lot of our work in other lifetimes. Uh, for some of us to teach and empower others. So we have our individual, you know, soul's mission that we're here to do. And in in our journey to embody that, we also do our work, which is looking at our past lives, looking at our ancestral lineage, looking at, at our mental programming, looking at our environment that we came into. And all of that intertwines with the law of attraction, of course, all the other laws uh, of the universe. Hmm. There is another one law of the universe that I, I sort of discovered as uh, I've been working in the what I like to call the metaphysical realm. Uh, and that is that uh, the, the law kind of I phrased it this way, uh, that there is always, without exception, an exchange. Always. Hmm. Now, I love reciprocity. Yeah, reciprocity. You could talk uh, Einstein's uh, statement about for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You could call it karma. But it's it's as if you can't outgive, okay, the universe. You can't just give and give and give and give and give and give and not expect to get anything in return. You will, whether you like it or not, in, in many instances. And it's kind of like without a giver, there is no receiver and vice versa, especially as we head into the holidays. You hear this all the time. Oh, you shouldn't have. I said that to my father once and he says, yes, we should have. We wanted to. Now, shut up. I mean, he wanted to share his abundance with us. And so we did. And for me to say, oh, dad, you shouldn't have was pace. I maybe it was a sort of a slap in the face to him saying, what do you mean? I shouldn't have. It's mine. I can do whatever I want with it. Um, but I know that there are a lot of people who have gotten stuck in, in that dynamic, if you will, both as the giver, you know, I don't have, I really don't have the abundance. I don't have enough. I, I'm barely making it myself. If I, if I give, I'm not going to have anything. And then there's those who don't want to receive, you know, like I just described. And yet I think of Jesus comments in the Bible, in the new Testament, where he's talking about how the birds in the trees, they don't work, they don't toil, 
And yet look at them, they're cared for. And yet you're the creation of the father. How much more he's going to take care of you? I mean, you know, what, what, what are you worried about where you're going to rest your head tonight or what you're going to wear tomorrow or where your next meal is coming from? That seems to also be a sticking point. And I know that's probably, again, based in old programming and fear. Mm -hmm. There's another piece to that is the overgiving. Right? When we overgive and we don't have any boundaries, then so it's a whole dynamic connected to that. I want to go back to the first law that we talked about, uh, the law of attraction, right? So mm -hmm. the law... So the laws, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, so when we are attracting, we're attracting from where we are. So let's say that we are in scarcity, we're in lack, we're in fear, uh, we're in anger, we're in frustration. That's where we're attracting. Right? So we want to move ourselves. So we want to have the awareness of your, whatever showing up in your environment is what you're putting out. It's the world is reflecting back to you. So if you want to put into effect and really use effectively the law of attraction, you want to move yourself into a higher vibration. You want to move yourself into a vibration that brings you more of what you, what you want. And that is, again, healing your heart, accepting yourself as you are, loving yourself unconditionally, forgiving yourself, believing in yourself, trusting yourself, knowing that you're enough. Um, and then from that place of I am, I am enough, I am worthy, I'm deserving, then putting out into the world and allowing that to reflect back to you. So that's one thing with that law. And, and the same thing with this, with uh, the law of reciprocity, it's that if you don't have the third thing that I mentioned, if you can never give, if you don't have any boundaries and you get significance from giving, I'm supposed to give, then you become a martyr. You're always giving, having a boundaries, people are taking and taking advantage of you. And you're, you're just working to give or you're scrambling to give. And that's an imbalance. So we want to make sure that we are we are in alignment with ourselves and that we're practicing the laws of the universe from a very balanced place of self-love of I am, you know, I am possibility, I am abundance, I am pure potentiality. So to your to your two statements about not feel that feeling that we have enough. So that's a mindset, right? So lack, if we say I don't have enough time. I don't have enough energy. I don't have enough money. We're running a lack mentality. So we want to be aware of that so we can shift that to more than enough. And it's a simple uh, rephrase of what we're saying to uh, not today or maybe later or um, maybe there's something that I can do that is within my reach, within my balance. So it doesn't have to be anything significant. And when we give and when we serve, we actually amplify our abundance because we activate abundance within us. When people ask me that, or when they tell me I'm, I'm not getting any clients, um, nobody's contact me, then I say, give. Uh, set up a workshop, uh, set up a something, uh, an invitation for others to come where you're giving to them, where you're giving of your time, of your energy, where you're moving them into the energy of abundance. So when you move yourself into the energy of abundance and you bring others to the energy of abundance, that creates a foundation for you and it activates it with you and it starts creating an overflow of that. And the universe rewards you for that. So if you're in lack, give. Give in a balanced way. For the ones that are not able to receive, that's also unworthiness and undeserved. I don't deserve that. I am unworthy of that. So we also want to delete that programming. We want to delete those belief systems and we want to allow ourselves to be able to receive and we want to allow the capacity to receive because again, we want to be in balance with ourselves and in balance with the universe. And of course, you know, the other one is overgiving. Uh, a lot of times we get our significance from overgiving, but that's, but in reality, we don't need significance. We are already enough. We don't need to preventing to anyone, including ourselves. Mm. So we want to, again, create those healthy boundaries around us so that we are at peace and in alignment with who we are in the light within. And we want to honor ourselves for that. We want to remember that there's a divine being. There's a light, a divine essence living within us. That we are the vessel. We are the channel. We are the temple for that beautiful divine essence that is divine intelligence, that is source, that is God, that is universe. That, it, that you know, it's radiating through our body, radiating through who we are 
through our blood, through our cells, through our DNA. And we want to honor that part of ourselves by having healthy boundaries, mm -hmm. by moving ourselves into uh, joy and happiness and seeing the world in possibility, uh, uh, seeing the world with gratitude. We want to honor and be grateful when abundance shows up, when somebody wanting to give us something, you know, pay for a coffee, open our door, uh, saying thank you for, to us. That's all a, abundance. So we want to be grateful for what we're receiving in the world, because again, that keeps amplifying that abundance within us. And I also think too, that people, they put uh, an expectation on what abundance and prosperity is supposed to look like rather than looking at the reality of what is like you just said a cup of coffee no well, that's not abundance it's like a couple bucks what's the that's not a because they've got expectations that it's supposed to be bigger and mm -hmm. shinier and what you know whatever the expectations are that also i think doesn't that doesn't that get in the way as well our expectations of what we think due to old programming Absolutely it's supposed to be. Absolutely. So, so it's the expectations uh, and how we view. So it comes back again to the lack, right? If we, if we don't value $2, then we don't, because it, money is energy. Mm -hmm. So even a penny, like I have kids and when they find a penny, they celebrate because it's energy is the universe saying, here you go, you deserve. So they celebrate. And if we celebrate everything that we receive, then we're celebrating the energy of having the energy of receiving, the energy of holding, the energy of more. That's really what we're celebrating. And we're saying, bring it to me, give it to me. I allow it, I receive it. However you want to send it to me, whether it's somebody paying for my cup of coffee, whether it's somebody opening the door, whether it's somebody um, giving me their parking space, whether it's a promotion, whether it's a new client, whether it's unexpected checks from government, <laughs> whether it's, you know, a uh, Something that you didn't expect, a mm -hmm. settlement that is now twice or three times more than what you expected, whether it's somebody paying you for something that they owed you for from four or five years ago, that's all abundance because you're saying, yes, I am I am open to receive it in however unexpected way you want to bring it to me. Mm. So we want to be open to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I add one more thing? Go, go ahead. Thing is, is our mindset, right? If we, if we are so focused on what we don't have, then we're focused on not having. So if we're focused on, I don't have this, when is this going to get here? We're, we're closing that the receiving channel and we're making it so hard for money and wealth and prosperity to come in that we're working against ourselves. So we want to allow ourselves to be in that place of however it shows up. And we want to focus on what we do have. And we focus on what we do have, then we get more of what we do have. So again, right. these are the lost. Mm -hmm. Maria Martinez, my guest, 360prosperity.com is the website. I'm Richard Dugan, and you, my friends, you're listening to Tell Me Your Story. I want to ask you, uh, Maria, uh, about something that has perplexed me. I've been curious about this for a long, long time, trying to understand this. It has been said and or written, uh, maybe even in the ancient wisdom teachings, that we are living multiple lives at the same time in different dimensions. Uh, and I'll have you go into that in a moment. But if that's the case, currently, my consciousness is focused on this one, talking here with you. Mm -hmm. But if I'm living another life or lives in other dimensions, um, do I have also then multiple conscience consciousnesses, <laughs> if that's the right plurality, uh, or do I just have the one? But right now it's just focused here and now. How do I how do I access and? become more aware of these other lives that I'm living or, or is that really a relevant question to ask in terms of trying to figure out what our life's purpose is and living a fulfilled uh, life? Well, that's actually a fun question because the, what I've been exposed to and what I've learned and what I've seen 
we are a creation, right? We are the original creation. So we have the divine self, the light self. And then that divine self has multiple expressions of itself, which is us living in different timelines. The past lives, the timelines, especially when we talk about collapsing timelines, those are parts of ourselves, parts of our expression, having different experiences. And we can access them. We can go back to the past. We can do it in hypnotherapy and regression. We can also do it in, in an energy session, going back into opening up different past lives. You can go, we can look at it going up into the Akashic records. It's accessible. This information is accessible. And just like we choose this timeline, we choose other timelines, then we choose different roles to play and different things to learn about and different things to express. Uh, and we choose it for, you know, the, the evolution. We choose it for the contribution to humanity and, and to other, other beings. And whatever we learn, that's collective consciousness, right? Because there's the collective consciousness of who we are, that all knowing self. So we can access that all-knowing self and access the information from all the other experiences, expre expressions of ourselves that are currently happening at the same time. Um, actually, when I was in college, I used to have a lot of those where my timelines would open and I could see into the different timelines and I can see you know, the roles that I was playing, the people, the different beings that I was with. Uh, so it, that's why it's, 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 a, it's a fun question because uh, I've experienced it myself many different times. And I've helped others to experience that as well. Uh, and in terms of what we're here to do, again, we chose different roles. Sometimes we're here to contribute to others. So we're here to help others experience their own lessons. We enroll our soul family as we come into their different journeys. You know, sometimes we help them. Sometimes they help us. Sometimes we help each other in a lesson. But ultimately, it's the evolution of our soul and to experience fulfillment and joy and happiness, however that looks like. In one journey, it could look like as teachers, as facilitators. It could look like um, being a mom. It could look like um, as a scientist, a doctor. It looks it looks many different ways. But ultimately, our soul's mission is to contribute and to f find that place of fulfillment and joy. Mm -hmm. To live to our to full potential and remember who we are. A question that I asked a guest about that. Will we eventually come to a place where we will know who we are? And the response was, no. We will come to a place where we we will know who we have always been. Mm -hmm. So the question to you would be, who have we always been? Yes. And earlier I mentioned that we are the divine self, right? That's mm -hmm. who we've always been. That's who we are, absolutely. And our journeys of our evolution is the awakening to remember that that's who we are, right? That that's who we've always been. And to come back to the place of fulfillment, pure potentiality, pure possibility, and live in, in joy and happiness and contribute to others in the best way, in the highest good. Who we've always been has been, you know, the expression of source, God, universe, divine intelligence, Um mm. Who we've always been as unconditional love, grace, divine power. That's who we are. Uh, and that is what I was referring to, honoring that part of ourselves, because that's mm -hmm. who we are. And if we fall in love with that part of ourselves, then we don't really allow procrastination. We don't allow uh, our, our boundaries to be deterred. We, we don't really allow um, anything less than joy and happiness and fulfillment. We don't allow... Uh, mediocrity we not we don't allow uh, uh, being stuck in the pain and the suffering and in the struggle we when we fall in love with that part of who we are our true self then we feel really empowered we feel very joyful um, we move into resilience we move into confidence we move into certainty we move into flow time is also uh, an issue it's 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 been described as a human construct this is not Anything that divine has any, I'm going to say, uh, concern with, let alone awareness of, because there is no time in regards to the divine. Uh, yet we have found ways to measure it uh, by the sun rising and the sun setting, those kinds of things, the movement of the stars, 
Um, we've, we've created devices to measure it, uh, hourglass, the sand drifting through an hourglass, along with all of the clocks and watches and timepieces and so forth. Um, there are moments in our lives when we are no longer aware of time, when we are in what some people, especially in the sporting world call, when we're in the zone. What do you mean it's Tuesday? I started this on Thursday. It's already Tuesday? Really? Mm-hmm. You know? And then, of course, the old question, where did where did the time go? I jokingly say Cleveland, but that's <laughs> just cute. So th- this world sometimes seems as though, based upon what I have learned, correct me if I'm wrong or enlighten me, if you will, That this world, though um, it has been said we're here to learn life's lessons, you know, those kinds of things. It's a schoolhouse. Some say we're just here to experience joy and happiness and so forth, find ways of doing that. And there are those who have also said, those of us who are here on this earth right now, all 8 billion plus, are considered by the spirit world, if you will, to be heroes because we have chosen this time to incarnate. And there are those who they've kind of had enough. They aren't checking out, but they sure would like to, if there was a way to push that button and get on that elevator and get the heck out of here. Um, What about the connection with, with time and our existence and, and reasoning I mean, and I know you've described it earlier about our reasoning for being here and, of course, finding and living that fulfilled life, finding our life's purpose. Can you can you elucidate further from that perspective? Yeah. I, so time is definitely more of a construct of society. You know, how we measure, how we move through a day or output or an input um, throughout the day. Um, but the as we move into our alignment, we actually move out of time. and. You described this zone, I call it a flow state. As we move into the space of creativity, creation, as we move into our our mastery, we're actually moving out out of time and space. Where that's where the that's where you amplify what you're creating. You're amplifying your manifesting ability, you're amplifying your creativity, you're amplifying and you're aligning actually, you're also collapsing your timelines there uh, in that space. Time is really an illusion. You know, it was created to serve as a measure, right? Um, especially in, in, in society, corporate America, um, it serves a purpose. But when we move into the spiritual world, when we move into higher states of consciousness, we actually move out of that space and things actually happen faster when we're out of time and space because we're not restricted by the linear time or the linear um, space. We move into the abstract and beyond. So we can look at time as sort of a basis, but when we move out of that, we're moving out, we're moving into creation. We're moving into uh, everything all at once. Mm. And would that be on all of the different dimensions that we exist in or just this one? Well, when we move into... So in this case, we're referring to this dimension, right? However, when you move into everything happening a lot of once, you're actually accessing the other dimensions. You're actually accessing information from other dimensions. You're actually accessing wisdom from other dimensions. You're accessing talents, creativity, information from other dimensions. You're, you're, you're elevating from all the timelines and you're actually moving higher and higher into your divine self. So you're seeing all the information all at once. Hmm. Well, and that's takes some um, developing uh, that that ability, if you will. Uh, can one do that going to a place that we talked about? I mentioned earlier going uh, into that quiet, peaceful, calm mm. inner space where we listen to that still small voice. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that simply starts by you creating your own practice, right? Or having a practice. And especially in the mornings, in the mornings where you just wake up first thing in the morning, close your eyes and allow yourself to be just in that stillness, in that space, and just allow 
you're not focused on your thoughts. You're not focused on anything. You're just allowing whatever wants to come through, whatever wants to move through you, whatever images want to come through you to come. You're not directing anything. You're not uh, focusing on anything. You're just allowing. So you're in a place of stillness. And through that practice, you can continue to expand into that space of, of stillness to, to the void, to that place, uh, that zero point energy. Um, and you can access more of yourself and more information. You can access connection with the divine. You can access connection with your guides, your ancestors. There's, there's so much. You're opening the door you know, to that higher place of wisdom. You're opening the door to the higher um, dimensions, higher realms um, of yourself and the divine beings. May sound a little strange as far as a question, but uh, what is it that you hope to achieve or accomplish with this lifetime of yours? In this lifetime, I want to I want to serve as the best vessel I can be for the divine. I want to be a catalyst for others to see themselves in their potentiality and their truth. Uh, I want to be a vessel for divine life intelligence to facilitate others' awakening, empowerment, uh, to fill their greatest dreams and desires and design the life that they want to live and actually live it and do it with lots of joy and happiness and be the best parent I can be for my children, uh, create my the, my own vision of my life in the process and have fun with it. Uh, one final question before we wrap things up here. Do you feel, do you believe, have you been told uh, or received information uh, to the to the effect I mentioned earlier about how some people believe we're here uh, to learn life lessons, and they will look at the various events in our lives, and they will label some of them mistakes. But I don't believe. I have ever made a mistake since I've been here. All I have had are learning experiences, life lessons. Your thoughts? So I, see that, oh, I see that a little bit differently. It's uh, I don't see that as life lessons or learnings. I, I see our journey as knowing ourselves, right? Moving ourselves into mastery. It's more of the recognizing who we are and recognizing what we're creating in our environment from the place where we're creating, whether it's the, the mindset or the programming, the mental models that we create and design for ourselves, the emotions and how we relate to the world, uh, as well as the energy and vibration that we move ourselves into. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe that that's what we're here to do, to recognize who we are, learn more of who we are, and then uh, from that place of mastery, see the world differently. So, mm -hmm. Everything in our life is event or events in our life. And the way we relate to them is based on what we took on from the past. And then we can choose whether that's going to be an empower event or that's going to be uh, an event that victimizes us. And the goal is really to see it from a place of empowerment because we're not victim, we're creators. So mm -hmm. that's what I believe we're here to do, to recognize ourselves as creator beings, not as victims to uh, the events in our life or the experiences in our life or or society or humanity. Um, part of our journey is to recognize ourselves as creator beings and move into the mastery of who we are and see the world from that place and then create from that place, from that place of observation, from the place of mastery, from a place of knowing. We're about to wrap up the program here on Tell Me Your Story with Maria Martinez. And I thank you so much for being a part of this program and the work that we are doing here to try to um inform people, give people those choices, as I mentioned earlier, and knowledge of the choices to help them, help make their dreams come true. And uh, I, uh, before I ask you the final three questions that I ask all of my guests, I want to remind you folks and thank you for listening to and watching. Tell me your story, New Paradigms for a New World. And we are here Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., streaming live at those times at richarddugan.com. Remember the 9 a.m. on Wednesdays as well. That's our special edition of Tell Me Your Story. We also encourage you to go to our podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, 
TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and many other locations. We're on YouTube as well. We hope that you'll subscribe, but at least get notification for when the next uh, podcast or conversation is posted. We also uh, ask that if you can support us financially, we would be gratefully appreciated. We have a PayPal account. It's there for your security as well as ours. And be sure to spend some time during this, the decade of perfect vision, uh, to spend some time going within and listening to that still small voice. And with all of that, my first of three is, who is Maria Martinez? Um, I am a mother. Um, I am a facilitator. Um, I am an entrepreneur. Uh, I am a divine vessel for transformation, a, a catalyst for change and possibility a wealth consciousness activator, a human potential activator. What is your life's purpose? Uh, I I kind of answered this earlier, and my life's purpose is really to help others to step into and embrace and allow and harness what is possible for them, Mm -hmm. to choose happiness and know that everything is available for them, to activate all that is available for them, their divine fortune, and create it and manifest it into this reality and live the life that they're meant to live. And finally, what uh, was your best day? Well, it's not one, it's two. Um, <laughs> when I became a mom, uh, and I, I, that was uh, the greatest gift of, mm. of creation. It was the greatest gift of creation. And uh, I'm, you know, even now I feel, I'm so filled with joy too. Uh, in gratitude that they chose me out as their mom. So that those two were my best days. <laughs> well, Maria, thank you so much for sharing your abundance of time with us here on the program. Thank you again. I know that you have to run off. You have another appointment, as do I. But it's been wonderful, and I look forward to having you back on the program again. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. And thank you for listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. And until our next broadcast, podcast, videocast, love to lull. Jeanette, I'm still listening. Dad, continue to be happy because I am. Smokey, I'll see you on the other side. And to my dear friend Zorro, aho, aho.